Good evening, and welcome to the City of Helena City Commission meeting, December 6, 2021, 6 p.m. This meeting is called to order. <clears throat> welcome and thank you for participating in the City of Helena City Commission meeting. We are pleased to be able to provide this alternative meeting format in the city's effort to broaden public participation. Please be patient as we may experience technical difficulties during the meeting. We welcome you read the following tips and guidelines for the app usage and your participation. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, divisible, liberty, and justice. And a clerk, would you check the roll, please? City Attorney Joden. Here. City Manager Harlow Schalk. Here. Uh, for the record, uh, Mayor Collins, I believe Commissioner Halliday is excused this evening. That is correct. Commissioner Dean. Here. Commissioner Logan. Here. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Here. Mayor Collins. Here. Board appointments. I'm recommending the following board appointments. Interim appointment of Carolyn Scott to the ADA Compliance Committee as a disabled community representative. Term will begin upon appointment and expire on September 1st, 2024. Interim appointment of Deborah Lane to the ADA Compliance Committee as a business owner representative. Term will begin upon appointment and expires September 1st, 2024. I'm also recommending non-motorized travel advisory council, appointment of Joel Ebert to his first term on the non-motorized travel advisory council. Term will begin upon appointment and expire March 31st, 2024. Appointment of James Sirwell to a first term on the the Non-Motorized Travel Advisory Council term will begin upon appointment expires March 31st, 2024. Appointment of Lucas Wallace to a first term on the Non-Motorized Travel Advisory Council term will begin upon appointment and expire on March 31st, 2024. Any discussion, Commissioner? Do we have any public comments? I'll interrupt you no much. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, just for the record, there were no hands raised, no written public comment. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I would uh, move to accept the following board appointments to the ADA Compliance Committee, an interim appointment of Carolyn Scott to the ADA Compliance Committee as a disabled community representative. Term will begin upon appointment and expire on September 1, 2024. Interim appointment of Deborah Lane to the ADA Compliance Committee as a business owner representative. Term will begin upon appointment and expire on September 1, 2024. And to the Non-Motorized Travel Advisory Council, appointment of Joel Ebert to a first term on the Non-Motorized Travel Advisory Council. Term will begin upon appointment and expire on March 31, 2024. Appointment of James Sherwell to a first term on the Non-Motorized Travel Advisory Council. Term will begin upon appointment and it will expire on March 31st, 2024. Appointment of Lucas Wallace to a first term on the Non-Motorized Travel Advisory Council. Term will begin upon appointment and expire on March 31, 2024. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Madam Clerk, would you take the roll, please? Uh, Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. Consent agenda claims. 
Uh, Manager Hollishaw. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. I, uh, Mayor, I recommend you make a motion, uh, and you accept a motion on consent for uh, claims paid in the month uh, in the month of November, as outlined in your packets, and as made available during the last uh, packet detail. The total of those. I apologize, I've run into a, sorry, I had a, a hiccup in my, my Zoom, I apologize. Um, the, uh, so these are claims paid on November 5th, 12th, 15th, and 21 for a total of $1,604,100.69 for checks in, in the uh, consecutive order of uh, one eight four nine six five through one eight five three six seven. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I'll move uh, consent agenda item A claims. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. Motion carries four to zero. Thank you. Report of the city attorney, city attorney Jordan. Uh, nothing to report, Mayor. Report of the city manager, manager Hollishaw. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. I just wanted to acknowledge uh, thanks to our our firefighters who helped the community of Denton in the last fire event. I know you were made aware of their response and support of that community. I know there are a number of organizations within Helena and uh, who are, are looking to support the ongoing recovery of that community after the fire and, and just wanted to make sure and acknowledge a thank you to our team who safely supported that response. Um, that is all, thank you, Mayor. Is that it? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Okay, uh, before we go to um, uh, uh, um, Helena Citizens Council, I, uh, I see we have our new fire chief on. I wanna congratulate Chief Campbell on his preference Chief, we're looking forward to working with you. I'm sure the rest of the commissioners are going through the scene. Communications from Helen Citizen Council, Representative Nancy Perry, you have the floor. There, I hope you can hear me now. Yes, we can. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. I'm Nancy Perry, representing Helena Citizens Council, the HCC. I'd like to draw your attention to pages 61 and 62 in your agenda packet. It is two letters sent to the Mayor and Commissioners uh, that was is it sent to you on October 27th, and again on October or November 10th of this year with the subject line consideration of HCC recommendations. Uh, our job as per the city charter is to make recommendations to the commission relating to the budget and future development of the city. And the recommendation process begins for HCC when an individual, uh, be it a member of HCC or a resident of one of our districts, brings up an issue that they want us to discuss. Uh, after debate and consideration and time, we sometimes make a recommendation to the commission. But when we send you recommendations, we very seldom receive a response. When the individual who prompted the recommendation asks us about his or her issue, we have to admit that we've heard nothing back. Uh, HCC truly appreciates how busy you commissioners are, and we would like to propose that the commission consider formalizing the process by which HCC's recommendations are handled so that we can receive a response from you in a more timely manner. And we propose instituting a two-part process. 
So the first part would be the recommendation could be included as an agenda item at either a commission meeting or an administrative meeting where it can be read and discussed. And second, after your discussion, the commission through either the mayor or the city manager could report back to the HCC on where the commission intends to go from here on our recommendation. An additional advantage of using this formal process is that members of the public who read the agendas ahead of commission meetings will be aware of the recommendations that HCC is making to you and will hear your responses to those recommendations. And this helps them see how their concerns, which they often express to us, are being addressed by you. It'll strengthen the two-way communication between you and us and it'll help the public see that you are addressing their concerns. So please give our proposal some thought. Thank you. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Baer. And I want you to know you're right. And this has fallen on deaf ears for a while. I think we'll take it up and formalize that process because um, there's no excuse. We should have done that. So we well, will you. take that up and formalize it. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. Um, I just had a couple of thoughts on this. So I think um, I, I agree that we don't really have a specific process in which, um, you know, these items are considered, um, you know, the only people who can add an item to an agenda would be the city manager or you, the mayor, or, you know, in the circumstance that two commissioners can call a special meeting. Um, I'm wondering, you know, if there is a way that, because I think probably some things would fall within, um, you know, the strategic priorities of the commission that the city manager is working on. I think there's probably others that seem to fall outside of that, um, which is okay. Um, but I do think that we might, I, I, because the, the HCC's process is, you know, they kind of have their, have their own internal process and we obviously get a ton of requests directly to us too. Um, I want to be careful that, um, you know, we're being really, um, I guess, strategic and thoughtful with how we move forward with some of them. One, so we're not spinning the wheels of staff just to not get anywhere. Um, and so I'm wondering, you know, if there's a way that, you know, if it aligns with what the city manager is bringing forward or one of your priorities, for example, Mr. Mayor, get it on an agenda item. And then otherwise, um, you know, if there's a commissioner that has an interest to say, you know, yes or no, we want to have a further discussion about this, um, do it as we do maybe like commission comments. Um, I mean, I think we need to formalize our process anyway about how we bring forward items because we don't necessarily have a process either, um, except for bringing something up during commission comments. And then if there's, you know, a consensus, then start moving that forward. Um, but that's not necessarily written down anywhere either. Um, so I guess those are, I, I, I totally agree. We need to have something more formal. I do want to be thoughtful about you know, how are we using staff time on issues of, you know, that fall into different yeah. places? Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate it. Uh, Commissioner Logan? I, I saw Commissioner Laughlin hand up, but then it went down. Am I correct? Yeah, I had a, a similar question to the city attorney, but I think Commissioner Dean cover, covered it. Okay. Commissioner Logan? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, um, share the sentiment of both of you who have, who have expressed uh, about our, it's sort of a one-way street relative to the Helena Citizens Council. And I think it certainly makes amount, uh, an amount of sense to give them some feedback. And, and uh, I guess I'm, I'm interested from maybe a staff perspective, um, whether it's the manager or the city attorney, um, are there any concerns that are jumping up their perspective. Uh, before we before we go, I just think you know they need and they need some sort of acknowledgement when they bring sure. forth 
their proposal and we haven't we haven't been doing that so as commissioner dean stated that um, we may have to formalize our process yes we may have to formalize our project but they need to be acknowledged that um, we got your proposal we've got your recommendation and um, this is what we say this is what we think that whatever it is they need a response after the their presentation i think that's the whole that, i think that, that's the bottom line but I appreciate all the comments. Madam Holoshock. Sure, as city manager, the um, city manager sets the agenda. So under the chart, absolutely, I can add within the city manager is reported of the city manager. I can add an item under it in um, specific follow-up from HCC recommendations to the commission um that way it remains within that higher level and then we can a, a couple thoughts i had first was that we've received a number of proposals uh one of them for example was the communications um program and which we ultimately implemented which is that iap2 method so there's an opportunity for us to share to you commissioners those recommendations that were ultimately implemented without the acknowledgement perhaps that should have been noted and secondly we can also um, identify those still outstanding in the next i can share that in, our, in my next update to you all and then more formally um, prepare memos to you all within that report of the city manager so that you can hear how we would look at it operationally and then you all can decide what you would like to do on a more uh, policy level as well. Thank you. So Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. So uh, are they seeking action from us here tonight? I think they're just advising us that we need to put a process in place and uh, we need to start that discussion as soon as possible. Okay, thank Am you. Am I correct? Uh, uh, Yes, that's I'm right, very... sir. That's okay. right, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, one other note, I think it might be helpful too. I know that um, internally staff is working on, you know, the streamlined bylaws, consistent bylaws across all the advisory committees as well. It might be an opportunity. Um, it might be an opportunity on the items that they're not making a specific policy recommendation, but providing feedback of what they're hearing from the community. Doing that, we can give them the same format that we'll be giving to the advisory boards in terms of how to provide feedback that may not require an actual, you know, policy action, but just a, a consistent process for feedback. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other final comments? Thank you, Madam Perry. We appreciate your comments and recommendation. Regular items. Consider the dedication of Vandalay Avenue right of way and Oak Street right of way for property generally located south of Prospect Avenue, north of 11 Avenue and east of North Sanders Street in the city of Helena, Montana. Manager Hollishaw, Director Hagen, Planner Ray. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, this item has uh, been brought before you previously. We, the team, recommended not uh, approving this dedication. Instead, um, we returned at what you um, agreed with, and uh, we returned to the drawing board with the developer and are pleased to share that we have uh, received the uh, support of all of the team members, including um, and I know that you pointed out our um, our new fire chief, John Campbell. I know that uh, he was part of the conversation within uh, his interim role, and this is the first opportunity he'll be able to serve in the uh, official fire chief role in response to any questions you might have. But I would uh, most importantly want to make sure that all of the hesitations that were previously of concern to all of us have been addressed by the developer and we appreciate the action of the developer to uh, work with us and um, we're continuing that path forward. So appreciate your support in the last round, appreciate the hard work of our 
uh, team here, as along with the developers. And um, Ellie, do you have anything you'd like to add in addition? We'll share it over to her if you're um, uh, Ms. Ray from Community Development Mayor. Thank you, City Manager Harlashuk. Um, so I have prepared a slightly pared down presentation for you all tonight, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, so as has been mentioned, uh, tonight you're being asked to consider the dedication of Vandalay Avenue right-of-way as well as Oak Street right-of-way for property generally located south of Prospect, north of 11th, east of North Sanders in the city of Helena. So by way of background, um, as has previously been mentioned in the two earlier uh, public hearings, um, the city received a request from DNM Development uh, to establish, re-establish Oak Street and establish the eastern portion of Vandalay from what was previously a vacated alley, both of which had been vacated in 1912. An amended plan application was submitted for this process um, showing the rededication of these rights of way. Um, and the applicant's intention is to have us uh, to dedicate a 70 foot wide Oak Street um, right of way, as well as a very width ranging from 66 now to 82 feet Mandalay Avenue right of way. Um, as has also been previously mentioned, the city does have adopted um, engineering and design standards, as well as uh, complete street standards. It follows the public right of way accessibility guidelines known as PROAG and has an established fire code, each of which requires a minimum 60 foot right of way for local streets. Um, so as a consequence, and um, in light of the fact that the uh, present amended plot application shows um, width in excess of 66 feet, both rights of way as presented do comply with these standards, guidelines, and code. Um, again, as far as uh, public information is concerned, this was presented at two different commission meetings, one on September 7th and one on October 18th, neither of which uh, legally required notice in um, the paper. Um, for example, or, or online. Um, so that's just to share with you the public information engagement portion of this process. Um, and before you tonight now is the recommendation to move to approve the dedication of Andalay Avenue right of way and Oak Street right of way for property generally located south of Prospect Avenue, north of 11th, and east of North Sanders Street in the city of Helena, Montana. With that, I'm happy to take any questions. I know that Marcus Fonda and Greg Worth are both available for any questions that you may also have of them. Thank you, Planner Ray. Comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor, I, I just have one uh, question. Uh, uh, I see Commissioner oh. Laughlin hands up <clears throat> before you, Commissioner. I'm sorry, Commissioner Laughlin. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I just had one question for Ms. Ray. If you if you wouldn't mind going back, maybe I, I think it's two slides. So can you just real quick, the last, the last main bullet, the city's adopted engineering. So have you all seen the engineering and site plans and have approved this or what this is just saying what the city's adopted? Could you explain this bullet? I'm sorry. Yeah, um, this is just a, a, a reiteration of comments that have been previously shared with you. Um, uh, I, I should preface this by saying that um, we have received comments from both the fire department and from transportation systems that state that um, they are in agreement that this uh, amended plot as proposed does meet their required their code requirements. Um, so just wanted to say that this statement is basically saying that um, what has been presented with this amended plot, not considering any site plan that might be moving forward for the development of the adjacent lots, um, that the right of way itself complies with codes. So this is um, not in consideration of any future discussions if there may be any pertaining to um, angled parking requests for the right-of-way that would come from the transportation systems department. This is exclusively for just the processing of the amended plot, which is exempt from subdivision review, just for the record. Okay, thank you. And then just one quick follow-up, Mayor. Go ahead. So does the applicant have any other um, items in 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 front of the city that might come to the, the commission at a future date, or do you do we not yet know that? Um, Mayor and Commissioners, I would uh, defer those questions to uh, ideally the applicant's engineer, Greg Worth. Um, I, my understanding is that there is likely to be um, a request for angle parking in the future, but um, that could change, I think, depending on what happens with the site planning and the, the um, lots themselves that they're looking to create. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Jane. 
Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I interrupted before. Um, Ms. Ray, I'm wondering, I know last time um, and on other projects, including like Rodney and, and others, you guys have included the um, kind of a graphic of the features that make up a complete street. I'm wondering if maybe you can just review what those items are right now. And um, because this is in excess of the 60 foot minimum requirement, I'm assuming they're all there, but can you maybe review that? Uh, Mayor and Commissioner, yes, I can. I do not have them to hand. If you bear with me, I can find them. Or alternatively, I'm sure that um, Director Kanaki can answer it faster than I can find it for all the required components of the local street. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Director Kanaki, are you available to answer it faster than plan a rate? Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, I, I am. You yeah, have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, the components of the complete street standard are the required travel lanes with including the width, the parking lanes, the um, curb and gutter, boulevard, sidewalks, sidewalks, and then there's a one foot buffer zone on the backside. So depending on which street um, classification you're looking at, that would determine the widths um, and other amenities, some of the other amenities that come up after you get out of the local and into the collector stage are dedicated bike lanes. Um, there's um, consideration for medians um, up in the major collector and arterial. So um, hope that answers your question. If not, I can um, yes, go ahead further. It does. Thank you. Thank you, Director Kanapke. Do we have any further comments from the commission? Do you have any public comments? Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, I do have uh, Mr. Worth's hand raised. You have the floor, Mr. Worth. Thank you and good evening, Mayor and commissioners. My name is Greg Worth, W-I-R-T-H with Staley Engineering. Um, this project, it's the expansion of the Capitol Town Center. It's right-of-way dedications for Oak Street and Vandalay Avenue to facilitate the continued development um, at the Capitol Town Center. Sanders Street and Vandalay Avenue to the west were dedicated last year. Um, Oak Street is proposed at a 70-foot right-of-way, and this is consistent with uh, Oak Street to the uh, to the north and south of the project and is consistent with all the north-south streets um, in the immediate vicinity. Um, in consultation with a meeting with city staff on October 29th, Vandalay Avenue has been modified um, to provide the full right away width of 66 feet, um, which is uh, greater than the minimum of 60 feet. Um, and with that, uh, we request approval and acceptance of the right away dedication for Vandalay Avenue and Oak Street. Um, and to respond to Commissioner Loeffler's question um, regarding the street components um, in our Subsequent meetings with the city, we understand that the, there's going to be two separate actions. One is for this right-of-way dedication here initially, and then uh, once we submit our infrastructure plans, um, we will likely have another commission meeting um, for uh, a deviation for um, instead of parallel parking, you would have uh, angled parking. Um, so that will be another subsequent uh, commission action. Um, so more more information forthcoming, um, but we do anticipate another uh, commission action on the project. So I am available to answer any other questions. And also uh, Mr. Marcus Sponda from DNM Development is also in attendance this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Worth. Do we have any other comments from the commission? Madam Clerk, do we have, oh, go oh, ahead. I, I was just gonna say, I'm grateful to uh, the developer for coming back and working with staff and I'm excited that we're getting to a good place here to move forward. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have any other public comments, Madam Clerk? Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I have Marcus Sponda with his hand raised. Go ahead, Mr. Sponda. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, um, thanks. I just wanted to add and, and kind of follow up that we, we as a developer really appreciate um, city manager and the city staff's uh, time and efforts to, to come to some resolution on this um, right away. And I know it was challenging, I think, for everybody to get there, but 
uh, we all had some great meetings and, and moved forward in a positive direction. So all right, we really appreciate that. Are you done? Oops, sorry, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Madam Clerk, do we have any other public comments? Mr. Mayor, commissioners, at this time, I have no hands raised and no written public comment on this topic. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Go ahead. Oh, Commissioner O'Loughlin. That's okay. I was going to make a comment, but I'll go ahead and make a motion and then maybe make a comment after a second. Um, so I'll move to approve the dedication of Vandalay Avenue right of way and Oak Street right of way for property generally located south of Prospect Avenue, north of 11th Avenue, and east of North Sanders Street in the city of Helena, Montana. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Laughlin, your comments will not affect the vote in any way, would it? I mean, the discussion of the uh, property. No, I made the motion, so. <laughs> okay. No, I just... I, I just wanted to comment, Mayor, and just say my my appreciation for all parties um, coming back together. I know that this was sort of a difficult um, conversation the last couple meetings for us, and just uh, really appreciative of folks coming back to the table and, and figuring out a path forward. Um, I also just want to say, you know, I mean, this is um, sort of our newest urban renewal district, and I think that there's a lot of opportunity in this area. Um, I think, you know, the, the challenge that we face uh, in, in this whole area is the fact that you've got, you know, a, a, a U.S. highway running through um, as one ways uh, on the north and south sides of, of this property, right? So I think that that's a longer term conversation, um, but I think what we truly started to envision when, when we were thinking about an urban renewal district in this area and the work with WGM to think about what could this area really look like um, as, you know, in, in what our community envisions. So um, thank you again to, to the city and to the, to the applicants and um, look forward to, to see what, what comes of it. Thank you, Commissioner. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, would you take the roll, please? Commissioner Dean. Okay. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. Thank you. Public hearings. Consider a resolution of intention to establish fees to be charged for the Bill Roberts Municipal Golf Course for the 2022 season. Manager Hollis Shark, Parks Director Bonozo, Finance Director Danielson. Who's starting? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, Mayor, just uh, quickly, this resolution of intention to increase fees at the golf course is an, is an item being brought forward by the Parks Department team. Director Pinoza is here and available for questions. The item is to increase fees at the course for the 2023 golf season, 22, uh, excuse me, 22 golf season, this fee increase will not only address gaps in revenue for operations, but also address the operating reserve needed for the course. Uh, the team did share this uh, revised fee amount and receive support for this increase through the golf advisory board mayor and commission. If you have further questions or need additional information, I know that director Pinozo is on the line as well. Comments or questions from the commission? Go ahead, Commissioner Olafla. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I do have just a couple questions. Um, so first, I, I was curious, and I don't know if this is for Director Pinozo or for Director Danielson, but do we have sort of an estimated um, or a projected revenue amount um, with, with the adjusted fee amount? Director Danielson or Director Pinoza? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer. Yes, thank you. So when um, I, this is Sheila Danielson, Director, Finance Director. Um, uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners and your question. Um, yes, we, when we were looking at the operating and maintenance costs of the golf course, um, the 
the increases were designed to cover the cost. So um, we we talked about you know different scenarios of um, what that what that looks like with or without general fund support, and <clears throat> these um, fees were designed to support the not you know we we kind of carved out the operations of the golf course from Muni's restaurant. And these fees were designed to cover the cost of the golf course operations and to support them. So Mayor, just a quick follow-up. And, and maybe this is just hard to do because I, I understand why, how you're sort of separating out the restaurant, but um, I have uh, in the uh, proposed FY22 budget, fees for services or charges for services totaling about 2 million. Do you have a sense of what we might expect then for FY 2022 with these changes? Um, not at this time, but I can get that calculation for you. Okay. And then Mayor, I, I do have one other question for, well, maybe just a follow-up for Director Danielson. Um, and this is more kind of a sort of bigger picture ph philosophical question about, uh, I, I very much understand the sort of the goal of charging fees to sort of cover the cost of the operations of the Gulf, you know, the logistics of this is that we have one Gulf fund. Um, I'm curious your thoughts on, you know, would, would it make sense for a future budget to actually separate, separate out and have two enterprise funds, one for Gulf and one for the city operating city operated restaurant uh, I can I can um, take a look at that at um, a different time and get back to you okay yeah I just was curious I mean given that these conversations tend to sort of we end up bifurcating these these conversations I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if it would be easier from a budget standpoint to really kind of be able to see the golf course and see munis um, separately. I yes, thank you. And as we go into this next budget season, we're certainly going to perform those analysis and and um, come up with a recommendation for the commission. Okay. And then the, um, my other question, Mayor, was for I think Director Pinozo, just looking at what what we have in front of us. Um, so it looks like the the half season passes are being discontinued. And I'm wondering, was that just sort of a, a temporary thing last last year? Could you could you talk through why that half season pass is being disconnect discontinued? Uh, yes, Mayor Commissioner Laughlin, um, our, it's my understanding that our half season passes were not something that were um, sold or used or bought that often, um, and we haven't sold any in quite a few years. So we discontinued that, um, that pass. And then, um, so that, that pass, as I, if, if I'm looking at this right, was the one that there was um, a, a distinction between resident and non-resident. Um, you know, this is a conversation we've had for a little while, just given sort of the general fund subsidies. Was there discussion about also, you know, considering a, 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 a different charge for resident versus non-resident, or maybe that's included and I'm just missing it. Uh, Mayor Commissioner, that is included. So if you, if you look on the exhibit A, which is this, the, um, the table, you'll see the tower club. Those are the resident discount um, uh, prices. Um, and those are specifically for resident resident discount. So we did not get away get get away from that. If you see that on the table, it says resident. Those are the resident discounts. So we have specifically a resident discount for entry nine holes, eighteen holes, and then a family pass that includes uh, the pool entry as well. Okay, thank you. But for season passes, those are, it's just a one, one charge. 
Correct. Was there consideration about looking at those for resident, non-resident? Uh, we certainly could. Commissioner? Yeah, so I'm just assuming that the answer though is no, it hasn't been, it hasn't lo been looked at at this point. Or have have you have you all looked at that and and, and chose not to move forward with it? Um, we these are the resident discounts um, that we implemented last year. Um, I don't believe the season pass was included in those. Um, these were sort of specific resident discounts that we carved out, um, but we could certainly consider others. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Dean. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I have two questions. One of them is um, along the same line. I know that when we had first discussed the resident and non-resident, or I guess the resident discount, and then the there's the non-resident um, higher charge for some of these, um, there was a discussion about how, you know, how efficient is actually determining who is a resident and who isn't. Um, have you sorted out how how to do that. And um, I mean, do we have, is there really any assurances that, you know, someone's not just saying, no, really, <laughs> I swear I live in the city. Yes, Mayor Commissioner, it is somewhat on the honor system. Uh, we do ask for. Oh. I know the honor system didn't work at the airport. Are we still going to go for that? What, what about I, uh, uh, driver's license? Would you like me to continue, Mayor? Or, oh, or no? go ahead. Sorry. Um, so, yes, largely it is on the honor system. We do ask for people's address. We do not do extensive research on whether or not that is within the city limits or not. Um, but if we are going to offer the resident discount, we do do some due diligence. Okay, great. Um, and then my other question. Um, was about if the um, golf advisory board had an opportunity to provide input here and if they had any thoughts. Yes, Mayor Commissioners, um, we did bring this to the golf advisory board at their last meeting. Um, they think uh, approving fees that are, um, you know, roughly cost of living um, increases annually are a, a very, um, sort of fair and predictable way to increase our fees. In the past, we've gone many years without increasing our fees at the golf course and then did large fee increases um, that were, you know, had a lot of impact. So um, I don't know that we'll always be able to do just a, a very small two to 2.5% increase in our fees. Uh, we are seeing cost of goods and services go up significantly. And so we'll have to look at potentially larger fee increases in the future. Um, but yes, the Golf Advisory Board did support these fee increases. Okay, great. Thank you. And then Mayor, I just have one more question. And I think um, this one is for Director Danielson. Um, I know that you all have been working on kind of a fees and assessments analysis in terms of, you know, are we really, are we accurately charging um, different types of fees. Will these still be included in that ongoing assessment? So we'll have a better idea in terms of if we're actually meeting um, our needs here. Thank you, Mayor and um, Commissioner Dean and Commissioners. Um, yes, and um, I, I will say that we're a little bit behind with that this year um, with some of the general fund fees and the recreational fees only because of staffing shortages. Okay. Um, I was just now able to hire a, a budget officer who will help perform some of that analysis. Um, that person just started today, Zach Smith. Um, I'm excited about, you know, having him get, get into that analysis. Um, I'm also very excited to be working with the new operations manager out of the golf course, Todd, who just started um, just shortly and waiting for him to get on board, familiarize himself and, and start establishing some, some meetings with him so that we can, we can dive deeper into um, operational costs, both for the Muni's restaurant and for the, the golf course and, um, you know, making sure that our methodology for establishing fees is, is fair and equitable and um, is focused on cost recovery. But 
also, you know, like Chrissy said, you know, providing that that service at a discount to some of our, our residents here in the city. So yes, I will say that we are moving in that direction. Um, Public Works Director um, Leland is also conducting um, a rate analysis for water and sewer. And, and so we have begun some of that, but um, I'm not sure that we're going to have everything done um, in time for um, budget launch, but we're certainly gonna give it a try. Okay, awesome, thanks, appreciate it. Thank you, Director, thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments from the, go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, Laughlin. Thanks, Mayor. Um, so thank you, Director Pinozo, for clarification on the resident, non-resident, because I was kind of missing that. I guess I wasn't totally sure what Tower Club was. But um, if I'm looking at the FY22 proposed budget, just to kind of go back to the question about sort of how, how each of these are performing. I mean, if and Director Danielson, correct me if I'm looking at this wrong, but if I'm looking at sort of green fees, 18 whole, um, it looks like there's projected 125,000. So is that, is, is that non-residents? And then down a, a few further lines in this fund, there's tower club, 18 holes for projected revenue of 12,500. So that would be the residents. I'm trying to pull that up, sorry. I'm having difficulty with my computer today. Um, Director Ponozo, do you have that up? I do not, um, I have the exhibit A up. I'm not sure what you're, you're referring to the, um, budget revenue projections, is that correct, um, Commissioner Laughlin? Yeah, that's right. Um, so I'm looking at, at Fund 563, the golf course, and I'm just, I, I'm trying to get a sense because I think, and maybe you just have these numbers of the projected sort of residents versus non-residents utilizing the golf course. I, I'm, I think what I'm reading is that sort of our, our normal 18 hole Revenue is projected at 125,000, and then Tower Club at 12,500. So, you know, one tenth. And I'm just wondering: is can I compare? Can I assume that's residents versus non-residents for those two lines? Yes. Well, I mean, the re the only residents would be purchasing the Tower Club uh, items. Um, so yes, um, but I think as you pointed out, we don't have a specific resident discount for every service or item that we offer at the golf course. Okay, well, maybe I can follow up offline just to see if that, you know, just, I'm, I am kind of just curious about sort of resident non-resident usage of the golf course. And I don't know if we have a sense of this at this stage. I mean, it looks like we're projecting, you know, far fewer residents utilizing the golf course than non-residents. And I think, again, I mean, this is probably for future commissions in the next budget process, but really kind of thinking about um, if the commission continues to provide, you know, a pretty significant general fund transfer to the golf course you know, is, is that something that um, is, is worth exploring a little deeper? Mayor um, Collins, if I may. Please. Um, thank you, Commissioner Laughlin, for um, your comment. And, um, and I, as I said um, a little early, I'm really looking forward to um, uh, Todd um, familiarize himself and um, working with him during the, the budget season so that we can definitely look into these counts. I know that Director Mponozo and I were really trying to identify the counts from um, the point of sale system that they have out of the golf course. And um, we weren't able to uh, really hone in on that data um, from, from how it's been 
utilized in the past. So um, we're, we're, we need to spend a little bit more time with the point of sale system to um, be able to extract that data and really be able to forecast the resident versus non-resident usage of the golf course. Is that clear, Commissioner? Yeah, Thank that's you. helpful. Thank you. Okay. And I just wanted to say, if, if I could, Mayor, we do have Todd Fitterer, who's our, he's our new operations manager. He is on the Zoom meeting tonight, and um, I just did want to welcome him. Todd comes to us from Green Meadow Country Club. He was the general manager there, and he's coming here as our operations manager. He has extensive experience in, uh, in golf course management, um, including um, doing a lot to turn uh, to turn other private golf courses around and um, get them revenue generating. Um, so we're really excited to have him on and, and we welcome him. Hey, Todd, can we see your face? So we don't pass by you without saying hello to you. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, if uh, Todd would uh, be promoted to panelist, he can turn on his video. Thank you. Todd, you have the floor. Uh oh. Oh, well. Okay, we'll continue. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner Logan. Thank you. I would. Uh... Move to approve a resolution of intention to establish fees to be charged for the Bill Roberts Municipal Golf Course for the 2022 season. Second. Mr. Mayor, this is Thomas. If I could offer just a minor suggestion to that Please. motion uh, and set a public hearing for December 20th, 2021. For this motion? That's correct. Okay. Would you like me to restate the motion, please, or Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. Okay, uh, for the city attorney, shoot that date at me again. Uh, December 20th, 2021. Thank you. So Mr. Mayor, um, if it's uh, all right, I would move to approve a resolution of intention to establish fees to be charged for the Bill Roberts Municipal Golf Course for the 2022 season and set a hearing date for December 20th, 2021, or 20, yeah, 2021. Second. Any final discussion? It's been moved and seconded, Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, for the record, I, I would just ask, maybe I missed it in my notes, did we take public comment on this item? I'm not sure, did we? Do we have any member of the public wishes to address the this item? Adam Clerk, do we have any raised hands? Mr. Mayor, commissioners, uh, thank you for indulging me. I don't see any hands raised and I have no written public comment on this item. Would you like me to take roll call? Yes, please. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. <coughs> Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. B, consider a resolution granting a conditional use permit to allow a vehicle repair use in the general commercial B2 zoning district for property legally described as lot one and three of the rear minor subdivision in the city of Helena and establish conditions of approval. Manager Hollis Shaw, Development Director Hagen and Plan uh, Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Just a, a quick intro and then I'll turn it over to um, Ms. Ray and uh, Director Hagen. I first want to point out that this is a conditional use permit which has conditions on its recommendation. So if in fact a motion is brought in from one of you towards the conditional use permit that uh, those additional items under the motion specific to conditions are being recommended by the staff. And so 
I'll turn it over to Ms. Ray to share more detail around the reasoning for those conditions and um, answer any questions you may have. Thank you, City Manager. Um, uh, as has been mentioned, this is an application that's before you tonight for a conditional use permit on uh, caliber collision, a vehicle repair facility um, that is intended or planned to be developed in the general commercial B2 zoning district for lots one and three of the Ray Minor subdivision. So this is on the north side of town near Super One Foods and Comfort Suites and the wastewater treatment facility. This is a vicinity map of the properties in question. Um, they are located north of Ray Avenue and uh, west of North Washington Street, respectively. Um, I note that because actually there will not be a frontage for the property along Queen Anne Street, and that is because the applicant has a concurrent application for an amended plat that was submitted more recently. So as you can hopefully see on your screens, um, the proposed property line cuts through the southeast corner of Lot 1A, so currently Lot 1. Um, so it will just fold in that little portion that's required to develop the proposed conditional use. Um, so uh, again, the applicant seeking a CP for the vehicle repair use, um, which is re uh, required within the B2 zoning district, um, the applicant plans to construct a facility that's roughly 16,000 square feet in size for the collision repair center. So it'll take up roughly one and a half acres. Um, the B2 General Commercial Zoning District has a district intent statement that states that it provides for compatible um, residential uses and a broad range of commercial and service uses that serve large areas of the city that are normally required to sustain a community. Uh, the vehicle repair use is defined in section 1124 of our code as a place for maintenance, service, and repair vehicles, including tires, transmissions, and brakes, bodywork, and painting, upholstery, engine repair, and overhauls. Um, here are some uh, photos of properties in the vicinity. Um, so you can see here the, the left hand side of the screen views that are looking north along uh, Washington Street. Um, this is zone B2 in the property. This is where the actual use would be cited uh, if approved. Um, looking to the west, you can see Heidi's Casino, also zone B2 in the city limits. Um, to the east is Public Lands and Institution Zoning. It's our wastewater treatment facility on the um, eastern side of North Washington. And then this is uh, a couple of photos looking south um, along Ray Avenue, as well as North Washington Street toward the Comfort Suites um, and toward Custer Avenue. Um, so in evaluating a conditional use permit, the commission um, uh, may grant a CUP upon a finding warranted by the facts, circumstances, and evidence of record that the following standards are met. That they are um, that the proposed CUP will not significantly increase risk to public health, safety, or general welfare, nor will it significantly reduce or impair the peaceful use of existing property or improvements in the vicinity and the zoning district in which the property is located. Um, in reviewing those two criteria, there are, are 12 factors that have to be considered to assess the impacts of the proposed CUP, the first of which is the location, character, and natural features of the property. The type and size of the proposed structure and improvements relative to their location on the subject property, historic uses, established use patterns, and recent changes and trends in the neighborhood, conformity of the proposed use with a neighborhood plan if one has been adopted, which there is none for this particular area of our town, um, current and proposed pedestrian, vehicular, and uh, bike traffic, including ingress and egress, circulation, and parking, whether the use is consistent with the city's climate change action plan whether the proposal meets the zoning dimensional standard requirements for the zoning district without the need for a variance, hours of operation, noise, glare, odor, and lastly, the expressed public opinion related to the factors identified herein. Um, so in evaluating this, we looked at the character of the surrounding B2 district, um, which is a blend of commercial, um, municipal, and there are some newly constructed multifamily residential uses that are going to be to the west of Queen Anne. They, I think, are complete or nearing completion just north of Super One Foods. They are not immediately adjacent to this subject property. Um, this area has been designated commercial in the 2019 growth policy, which is intended for areas that are uh, comprised predominantly of uses that are involving the transaction of goods or services, such as retail office, restaurants, entertainment, and so forth, potentially with limited single family home uses, but more likely with high density residential uses as is being seen um, to the west of Queen Anne. So all buildings and uses located within the city must comply with our adopted codes, including fire uh, building and zoning codes. This proposal as presented in the site plan so far does. Um, the property is currently served by the city's police and fire departments and will continue to be served by them. Based on the information in the application 
pertaining to trip generation analysis. Um, the use is not expected to generate and more than 134 vehicle trips per day. And as such, it's expected to have minimal impact on the local street network. Um, vehicle and bike travel will be accommodated in the existing rights of way. And sidewalks will be required to be installed um, adjacent to uh, the rights of way for this property. So along North Washington and Ray, where they currently do not exist as part of the building permit process. Um, and in installing these sidewalks, it's hoped that this will help create more connectivity throughout the district and, and by extension, reduce carbon emissions um, in alignment with the city's climate change action plan. The development and associated off-street parking will be accessed via an existing curb cut that's on Ray Avenue. This is the same curb cut that would be shared with uh, the Heidi's Casino. Um, over the course of working on this application, there were um, comments made that perhaps we needed to see whether there was going to be a um, curb cut required on North Washington with this project. No such curb cut is required by the applicant and will be sought by MDT, who actually are the um, owners of that right of way. Um, all vehicle repair activities will take place within the repair center building itself. None of them will occur outside of the confines of that structure. And the vehicle storage area isn't planned to be fully screened by the applicant in order to help mitigate noise, glare, and any odor concerns that might arise. Um, the hour of operations are anticipated to be um, between 8 and 5 or 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, no weekend hours, which is consistent with neighboring commercial uses. Um, as far as public comments are concerned, as of today, we have received two public comments on this CUP proposal, the first of which came from Steve Allen, who generally wanted to express his support of this application as being a good fit for the district, and um, one from Jim Raley as well, speaking to um, the need for landscaping and other buffering measures um, for the proposed development. As far as public engagement and information on this project is concerned, it was an informed and involved project. Um, the application was previously reviewed by the Zoning Commission on November 9th. Um, at the time, there were, uh, was an opportunity for public comments. None were provided in support or against this proposal. And the Zoning Commission recommended conditional approval. Um, as far as noticing these two public hearings, both before the Zoning Commission and tonight's meeting, uh, there were notices placed in the independent record and neighbor notices were mailed to those within 150 feet of the subject parcel. So the recommendation before you tonight is to move to approve a resolution granting a conditional use permit to allow a vehicle repair use in the general commercial B2 zoning district. The property legally described as lots one and three of the Ray Minor subdivision in the city of Helena, Montana. If approved, the recommended conditions are to screen in the form of fencing with no opacity and landscaping shall be placed along the perimeter of the internal storage parking area to provide a buffer from light and glare trespass. All vehicle repair activities will be conducted within the confines of the repair building to mitigate odor and noise impacts. And lastly, all conditions must be met within one year of CUP approval as per section 1139 of the Helena City Code. And these are basically reinforcing what the applicant already intends to do with this proposal. Um, in order to mitigate any nuisance that could potentially arise from the vehicle repair use. Um, and with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Nick Four is also available to answer any questions you may have on behalf of the applicant. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Commissioner Ray. Uh, Commissioner Dane. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is for um, Ms. Ray. Can you tell me um, when, when you all are going through these and then when they go to the zoning commission, are they evaluated for um, if, if it'll be in compliance with our dark skies ordinance? Um, I know that, you know, includes some of the language here of the landscaping and um, buffering, but does that also mean it's compliant with our dark skies ordinance? Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, that is not a factor that is considered with the application. It is only those 12 factors that I presented on the earlier slide. Okay. Things that get considered as part of the discussion. I guess, so I, this is not, I mean, it's kind of a general question. How do we evaluate whether, no, I mean, not just on CUPs, but on, on any type of development, if it's compliant with that? Or do we? Director Hagen. Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, Commissioner Dean, we have a dark sky ordinance in the city and all lighting is has to be installed in accordance to that to that ordinance. 
So that's part of what we review when we review the building permit per site improvements of particular commercial businesses. I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you, yep. Um, and then my other question, this is probably for the applicant. Um, I'm just curious, I saw in the minutes from the Zoning Commission that this is a national company and the first location in the Helena area, but is there, are there any um, of these um, uh, uh, collision centers in any other part of Montana? Or are we the first? Uh, <clears throat> Madam Clerk, do we have the applicant present? Mr. Mayor, I am unsure if this individual is the applicant themselves, but I do have a hand raised. Nick Foray. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Are you the applicant, Mr. Foray? Uh, yes, Mayor, I'm, I'm the applicant. Um, on behalf of Cross Development, we represent Caliber Collision. Okay, um, uh, did, did you hear Commissioner Dean's question? I did. So <clears throat> as far as that goes, yeah, we've got some plan uh, throughout Montana. We're still actively searching. Um, you know, it all depends on market size. <clears throat> so we may be able to put an additional one in Helena, but more than likely just one in Helena. We're also... <clears throat> excuse me, have one going in in uh, Billings, Montana currently, and then searching some of the other uh, bigger markets like Bozeman. Um, I think that's it for now, but yeah, continuing to search throughout Montana, but um, actively looking. And uh, as you mentioned, we're a national chain that has over a thousand locations. Uh, so it is one of the larger auto rep repair facilities in the country. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Do we have any other Commissioner O'Loughlin? Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, question for Planner Ray. Um, I could you remind me um, is uh, vehicle repair use allowable in, in other zones in or is it required? Is it allowed by right in other in other zones or is a CUP required for? for most, most, most zones that we have. Yes, Mary Commissioner, it can be one moment I will be able to answer that question for you. And then just a follow up maybe while you're looking, I, I'm just curious about the, the policy reasons for requiring a CUP. If you have a sense of that, just kind of based off of your knowledge and experience with it, is it um, generally just the, the operations noise and just the use of the land, or do you, if you have a sense of the, the policy reasons why a CUP is required? Um, Mayor Commissioner, so that last latter question, I don't have an answer. I assume that it's it's predominantly related to the potential nuisance issues um, that could arise. And I believe that a number of the facilities we have in our community do employ screening standards that would um, mitigate those concerns. Um, in answer to your first question, a vehicle repair use is permitted by right in the downtown commercial light manufacturing um, and manufacturing industrial district by right. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? Any well, public comment? I'm sorry, Mayor. I guess I do have one question. It, it, I just... I saw in the minutes there was some conversation about sort of the adjacent residential, and I'm I'm wondering if maybe you could also share with the commission um, a, a little bit of a summary of that conversation with the the zoning commission. So my understanding is that there is residential adjacent, but I don't quite remember where, and then sort of how those conditions um, relate to where sort of the planned residential area might be. If that makes sense. Sure, absolutely, Mary Commissioners. Um, and I will go back um, in my presentation, actually give you a little more context for answering that. Apologies if I slip through. So um, looking, I don't know how well you, hopefully you can see this um, screenshot of the amended plot that has been submitted, which would, I think it's more instructive in answering your question. So um, you can probably see on the Western side of this amended plot, that is where Queen Anne currently is, the right of way. Um, and the proposed use as presented actually is not going to have any adjacency 
to this project because they're carving out the portion that covers the southeast corner of lot one. Um, so another helpful, so if you can see here where it is, I think it's um, Miklos 7 Avenue and Tiger Avenues, that those are the areas that the newer happy homes are being constructed in. Um, so it's nearby, but it's still a fair ways away um, across the street and you know, a parcel distance away, I guess you could say. Um, so at the end of the zoning commission discussion, I think that that was the consideration that it's not going to have any immediate adjacency. And even for um, Heidi's Casino and anything that gets developed on what would be lot 1A in the future, um, the screening will be such that that should alleviate any concerns um, for those developments, that there won't be any intrusive lighting, noise, odors, and other things that could be disruptive um, during, especially um, unsociable hours after working hours and early in the morning. Super helpful. Thanks, Mayor. You bet. Do you have any public comments? Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, I see no hands raised at this time. I've received no written public comment on this item. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, commissioner. I would um, move to approve a resolution granting a conditional use permit to allow a vehicle repair use in the general commercial B2 zoning district for property legally described as lots one and three of the Ray Minor subdivision in the city of Helena, Montana with following conditions. One, screening in the form of fencing with no opacity and, lands and landscaping shall be placed along the perimeter of the internal storage parking area to provide a buffer from light and glare trespass. Two, all vehicle repair activities will be conducted within the confines of the repair building to mitigate odor and noise impacts. And three, all conditions must be met within one year of CUP approval as per section 11-3-9 of the Helena City Code. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. Okay. Um, before we go to public comments, I, I think I skipped over um, communications proposals from the commissioners. And I know uh, Commissioner O'Loughlin had some communication she wanted to present. So you have the floor, Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just had a quick question for the city manager and staff, and um, perhaps we could add this to a, a future agenda, but I, I think it has been helpful for the commission and the broader public to hear just a quick reminder on what the city's plans are for snow removal. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have a, uh, a firm sense of sort of how the city, what the timeline is for, um, you know, when folks should be removing cars off of, um, uh, you know, snow routes. And that kind of update has been helpful, I think, for us to receive. So perhaps that could be placed on the agenda for the 15th, just a city manager update. I don't have a problem or, with that. Or, or if or if they have it now, we could get it now since we have snow on the ground, but didn't want to put you on the spot if you need time to get it to us. We will, uh, uh, Manager Holishaw, do you want to say anything? Or we can put it on the 15th agenda. I, I do believe we have uh, sufficient information to today answer those questions. I can see Transportation Director Kanaki on. I also want to remind everyone that we do have the My Helena app, which does provide under our, um, it actually has an icon right at the front of it, which is specific to snow. And uh, certainly we'll turn it over to Director Kanaki about tonight in particular, and then what people can expect for snow removal. Director Kanaki, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Mayor, Commissioner, City Manager. <clears throat> so yes, this afternoon storm was a little unexpected, but um, the crews are out and um, are <clears throat> getting sand down and plowing where they can. Um, they'll be working 10 or 12 hour shifts tonight to get the town cleaned up um, before tomorrow morning's um, commute. The, as far as towing goes, um, as you all are aware, um, November 1st was um, started the towing of trailers, um, boats, recreational vehicles, and stored items. Up until this snowfall, we've been noticing them with uh, courtesy notices on the trailers themselves or the residents. We've been giving them a few days up to a week to get the trailers moved, and then we have um, been towing them after that. As far as emergency snow routes, <clears throat> the uh, criteria for that is a forecasted storm of two inches or greater along the designated emergency snow routes. When we receive that uh, prediction or forecasted storm, then that morning or that day, um, the residents, uh, we asked to move the vehicles off the street so that the, the plows can go through and clear, clear up those emergency snow routes. This storm didn't quite meet, um, well, it didn't meet it at all because they A, didn't forecast the amount of snow and it was a little bit more intense than um, they had thought. Uh, from my understanding, the storm went south more, so that's why we got a little bit more snow. But <clears throat> the, like I said, the plows are out. Um, it was slick there for a while, but uh, they should be getting the town cleared up. And uh, any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Director. I hope we can announce this whatever other way. TV, I see the IR is here. I hope they can put it out there too. So any other way we can put it out to inform the public, let's do. Director Kanapi? Uh, Mayor, just to answer your question, it should have been out on uh, TV. Um, and uh, we'll work with the PIO to make sure that the, the message is out there and clear now that we finally have some white stuff on, on the ground. and. Hopefully we'll continue through the winter to uh, accumulate up in the mountains to uh, preserve um, not only our forest, but our water supply. You bet, thank you. Okay, is there anyone from the public wishes to address the commission? Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, I have no hands raised at this time. I have no written public comment received either. Any final comments from the commission? Okay, nothing else. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.